Hey, welcome everybody, and thank you for joining the webinar today. Um, so before we start, um, a couple of housekeeping announcements. You will see a chat box on the right-hand side of your screen. Um, so as we go throughout the webinar today, please feel free to throw out your questions in there. We'll answer them as we go. I um, mean, we do have a dedicated Q&A spot at the end of our time today. Um, if you have any connection issues, go ahead and click the reconnect button at the top of your screen to jump back in. And finally, watch out for polls to pop up for you throughout the webinar. We encourage you to participate in those as well. Um, one final thing before we get into it, a recording of the webinar will be housed on our career page. We'll show you that website. Um, it's duncanaviation.aero backslash careers. So if you are unable to stick around for the whole webinar today, or if you want to jump back in um, and check something out later, that will be there for you um, down the road. So like I mentioned, today we have our recruiting team here to share information about career opportunities at Duncan Aviation. We are also fortunate to have a couple of our finest team members joining us to talk about their careers and how they found their way to Duncan Aviation. Um, so without further ado, we'll introduce everyone on our end and get to it. Uh, so my name is Jennifer Monroe. I am an HR team lead for Duncan Aviation. I have been at Duncan for four years and I've had the opportunity to recruit um, for all positions for Duncan from around the United States um, and at all of our locations. Kendall. Hi, uh, Kendall Folds. I'm a recruiter here for Duncan Aviation. I've been with the company for 15 years. I started in our safety department. I was a safety guy. And then I moved into the training department for a little while and I've now been a recruiter for about two years. And I specialize in veteran recruiting. As you see, I'm a retired AMSC, which stands for Aviation Structural Mechanics. My name is Brian Forsh. I'm an engineering team leader here at Duncan Aviation. I've been here for a little over six years now, but uh, before coming to Duncan, I uh, served in the United States Marine Corps. I worked on uh, KC 130D aircraft at uh, BMGR 352 uh, in the power line shop. Brad Wales, um, engine line assistant manager. Um, been with Duncan Aviation for a little over five and a half years now. Um, my aviation background started with the Coast Guard. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, so before we get into our topic today, I wanted to give you a little backdrop of Duncan Aviation for those who aren't familiar. Um, a little bit about who we are and what we do. So Duncan Aviation is a family owned uh, MRO, maintenance repair and overhaul facility. In fact, we are the largest family owned MRO in the world. We focus on complete tip to tail maintenance and refurbishment of corporate and privately owned aircraft. We've been in business for over 60 years and the fourth generation of the Duncan family is entering into our ranks uh, currently as we continue to move the company forward um, as we plan for our future. We are located um, at full service locations in three uh, different states, Lincoln, Nebraska, Battle Creek, Michigan, and Provo, Utah. We also have about 28 satellite shops that are strategically placed across the United States. And as I mentioned, we do just about everything to corporate jets, we just don't build them. So from scheduled maintenance to engine repair, avionics upgrades, interior redesigns, and custom paint, we are a one-stop shop for our customers um, that come to us from around the globe. We not only provide a number of services to our customers, we have the capabilities of working on a number of different aircraft models and engines. We are a service center for Cessna, Dassault, Embraer, and Bombardier. And Duncan is also, also authorized by Honeywell, Pratt & Whitney, GE Williams International, and Rolls-Royce to perform a broad range of engine services, including MPI and CZI inspections. So in order for us to provide all of the, diff the different types of services to our customers, we have a variety of positions that we need to recruit. We offer a number of different technical career opportunities, such as airframe and engine technicians, avionics specialists, and structures technicians. We have a flight department, as well as an FBO and line services team. And in addition, we offer careers in engineering, sales, warehouse, and a number of different support roles. With a variety of different career options and available pathways, Duncan Aviation provides opportunities to candidates of all skill levels. We take pride in our ability to train and develop our team members to take their career to the next level. So without further ado, let's hear from some. Kendall. 
Good morning, and uh, just wanted to remind you that the three of us, uh, Brad, Brian, and myself, are all veterans. Um, we want to thank all of our service members, our veterans, wherever they might be, uh, for their commitment, their dedication, professionalism. We also want to thank their family for supporting them, uh, because the three of us know what that takes for you to be able to have a career or any time in the service and, and be backed up by your family. So as you see up there on the screen, about 25% of our complete company is military veterans. So we have, we're proud to say about 600. We'd like to keep adding to that number and we do uh, keep doing that. Uh, before we had the wonderful coronavirus, we had already hired 24 veterans this year. And so hiring slowed down a little bit. But I will tell you that uh, from Brian and Brad's department, the engine department, they tell me we're probably about 75, 80 percent of them are prior military. So that's really cool for us. We also participate in a lot of different uh, recruiting events, career fairs, and uh, we also sit on uh, TAP panels, which are transition assistance programs, because we want to actively help our service members as they leave the service, find employment. And um, we also have a uh, VA on the job um, component, part of our apprenticeship program, which we'll touch on a little bit later. So let's get started and we're going to talk to our <coughs> two fine engine guys and we're going to start out here with Brian and Brian it said you said you uh, were in the Marine Corps and I want to know it Marine Corps that's the part of the Navy right in that department of the Navy doesn't Marine Corps fall into that? Unfortunately but you know it's the, it's the men's department. Yeah. <laughs> and for all our audience if you haven't heard that before I'm sure you have and, and we can take it we're okay so again thanks for your service Brian. So let me ask you, Brian, so you left the Marine Corps and you're ready to uh, do something else. How did you hear about Duncan Aviation? Well, first, after Marine, uh, leaving the Marine Corps, I uh, did a brief stint contracting um, at the current squadron that I was at. But uh, after our uh, contract was uh, expired and not renewed, um, obviously I had to find a job. So I put my resume just about everywhere. Um, and then I found Duncan on the online site, uh, JS Firm. And that's a good point. There are many uh, firms out there that do go out and help us recruit. I would encourage you, though, if you would go directly to our website uh, or contact either me or Jennifer uh, directly, we'd be more than happy to help you because you don't always have to use another firm. You can come straight to us. So, Brian, here you are. You've been in the military, then you left the Marines, and now you're working, you've worked contract work, and now you're looking at Duncan Aviation, and so were you concerned about fitting in with our culture because it probably might be a little different, which I believe it is different. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't really worried about fitting in. You know, uh, me personally, I, I fit in just about anywhere I go. Um, you know, when I came here for the interview, I was greeted by the manager at the time, the engine shop manager, and he was very welcoming, and I, I took his professionalism and his hospitality as a, as a direct representation of the company. Um, you know, but I've always had that uh, personality ingrained, ingrained uh, in me from moving around so much uh, due to my, my father being in the Marine Corps as well. So it never has never been very hard for me to fit into any sort of culture. So I see, Brian, your father probably wanted to be in the Navy too since he was in the Marines, but we'll leave that for another day. <laughs> um, so then you get here and then you come to work because for you, none of you that have ever been here, I wouldn't you show up at Duncan Aviation in Lincoln, you see all these big, huge steel buildings and you're thinking to yourself, ah, that's probably if I work with United or American Airlines or somebody and we don't, this is all corporate. So you walk in the door and what do you think? You know, I was, I was blown away, you know, not necessarily just from the lobby that I walked into, but from like the over seven hangers that I was walked through on my little uh, um, tour for my interview. You know, I had, I had no idea the scale of uh, the work that Duncan Aviation performed. You know, from the number of hangars, the abundance of back shops, uh, there was there's just so much going on here. Um, let alone the size of the aircraft that Duncan works on. You know, coming from a uh, one platform uh, job to you know potentially working on six or seven different platforms is uh, is pretty spectacular. It can be kind of overwhelming. And so you get here though, Brian, and you have some good experience because now you've been again in the Marines, work for a firm where you did contracting. Now you come here, but you don't have an A&P, which is an airframe and a power plant license. How did you manage to get that A&P? So in coming into Duncan, you know, inside my interview that, you know, I asked that question um, saying, well, well, you know, I don't have my A&P, but, uh, 
would I be able to obtain it or, you know, is Duncan able to help me out? And, you know, Duncan is able to help out anybody that doesn't have their AMP. So when I got here, you know, that was my initial intent to always get my AMP. Um, so I pushed, you know, obviously working my first year here, um, which was a requirement for me to get my AMP. Um, but I always kept it in my mind and, you know, always made that effort to remind everybody that uh, I wanted to get my AMP. Um, so after a year, I was sent to Baker's and did the two week crash course and achieved my AMP. Cool. Very, very good story. And just a big thing here I want to talk to, I'll put on my training hat for a minute. And that is one of the things that Duncan <clears throat> asks of employees. We'd like for you to be here a year. Once you're here a year, then you'll qualify to go to a, any of our specific training to where we would pay for that, which is a really good deal. But I got to ask you though, Duncan, uh, Brett, Brian, because Duncan pays for that. I'm wondering what the, what's the commitment on your end? Because, you know, I know in the Marine Corps you sign up and you get all that training, but you do four years and they tell you where you're going to go. But how about us? What did we ask for you? So Duncan asked just for a, uh, a one year sign commitment for any training that you do. You know, I've been to engine schools every year um, since being here and every year I've had to sign that contract just asking for one more year of service to them after giving me uh, the training. And I, again, I want to tell you, I think that's really incredible of our company to do that because the, when Brian talks about these engine schools that he goes to, uh, I've been the guy that was in the training department and I did handle the engine uh, side of things. Uh, I, I never saw a school that didn't cost at least $8,000. That was just for the school. So we're spending a lot of money because we believe in you. We want to help you develop here. And so, cool, Brian. Um, and let me say, I'm looking at your career path here and it looks like you, you know you're not you're doing pretty good you moved you started here as no a and p and you moved along and next thing you know you're a team leader up there and so you know tell me before i ask you i'll just remind our audience because the three of us here as military people we know that um, you got to have time and grade time and service and then you got brad and me we're talking you got to be a good test taker and all this so you can promote but how does it work here at duncan how you get to promote so First off, you know, for promotion wise, um, it's it's merely based off of your performance as an individual. You know, the harder you work, the more you obtain. Um, and I mean, it's 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 ingrained in you from day one, you know, and even in your interview. That's how we tell everybody that uh, your performance drives your promotion. Um, but, you know, for how you get there, you know, as cliche as it sounds, hard work and dedication. Um, you know, I, I push as hard as I could to absorb everything that was thrown at me. You know, I always made myself available. Any overtime that was thrown out there, I took the advantage or I took the opportunity to take it. Um, you know, I turned, never turned anything down, down, nor did I complain after accepting it. You know, um, you get out what you put in here at Duncan Aviation. Plain and simple. Cool. All right. Well, so let me ask you. So now you come to Duncan and you're moving along and I want to go back just a little bit. So you worked on one platform and now you get to Duncan. Were you overwhelmed? Because uh, you guys work on a lot of different engines here. So what do you think? Was it overwhelming? Yeah, at first, yeah, it was uh, It was pretty overwhelming, you know, uh, coming from, like I said, a one platform um, to, you know, working on six and each platform has a different type of engine. It was definitely overwhelming. But, uh, you know, resilience and learning all the, the systems really helped out. And part of it, though, we do kind of mentor guys, do we not? Just like we do, just like happens in the military, we just don't turn you loose. I mean, you're going to have to spend some time with a technician so you can actually figure out what's going on. Even though you have the skills of an engine tech, you still need some guidance, do you not? Sure, of course, yeah. We, I mean, we're not going to take a brand new guy and throw him on an engine that, uh, you know, and say, all right, here you go. No, we, uh, we have lead techs and tech twos or tech threes. Every, every step of the way mentors the step beneath it. So um, having that, that help throughout the daily process is very um, you know, beneficial to everybody. Well, cool. All right. So I just want to ask you as we wrap it up with you, what advice would you give the veterans as they're looking to uh, leave the service uh, about coming to Duncan Aviation? Yeah, it'd be the same advice that I'd give to anybody. You know, make sure that you're here for the right reasons. Um, if you want to make this a career and not just a job, make sure that people are aware of that. Uh, that mindset sets you apart from just about anybody else who doesn't really have that path yet. Uh, you know, uh, Duncan Aviation provides you with the opportunity and ability to work on today's most advanced business class jets. You know, take full advantage of it. Hone your skills to whatever that fits the needs of the company, much like you, you, know, you did for the military. Well, thanks, Brian. And we're going to 
roll over here to Brad now, Brad Wales, and uh, you know, uh, Brad, uh, you know, sort of a sister, sister, or kind of a sister guy to me because he was in the Coast Guard. We call him Coasty. So I think we have two people total in the whole company that were in the Coast Guard. Uh, but hey, he, he's a good guy, and uh, we always joke in the Navy that it, in order to jo- join the Coast Guard, you have to be six foot tall. So if your ship went down, you could walk to shore. But <laughs> we know better than that, for, uh, Brad. So Brad, let me tell you, you took a little different path than Brian. Yours is a little different. Why don't you talk to us about how that happened? Yeah, it's a little different. Um, I got my initial aviation experience from the Coast Guard, um, you know, working helicopters. When I got out, I used my GI Bill. Um, to get my AMP and my associate's degree. Um, before I even started school, I went down to a local uh, airfield and got a got a job with a, a general aviation outfit and, uh, you know, working piston pounders and turboprops and kind of a variety of different aircraft, uh, performing everything from engine to airframe inspections. Um, worked in general aviation. Uh, and then uh, Brian, I knew Brian, so he sparked my interest on deck in aviation. And... Uh, seeing the boxes come into my um, jet general aviation company. I saw the Duncan boxes, never really knew what it was all about. And then, uh, and then, yeah. All right. Today. Well, so you knew Brian. So Brian was going to AMP school with you. Are you going to school with Brad? What happened there, Brian? Yeah, I was, I was going to school with Brad. We were doing night school together, you know, just uh, raging through AMP school and, uh, you know, my contract expired, so I had to find a job, and unfortunately, there was nothing in San Diego for me, so I headed out to Nebraska. All right, well, and so you veterans out there, and most of us all know this, uh, that, um, you know, whoever you get to know in the service, a lot of us keep in contact, and it's always helpful to keep in contact, because then you can get a hold of them, and maybe they can say, hey, we got a job opening. I know Brian has uh, been Brian's made a lot of money off us. I, hard to believe a really smart Marine, but we do pay a little bonus for referring people. And Brian has referred quite a few people. So, uh, uh, yeah. And then he makes some rent his basement too. I mean, this dude, dude's got it going on. Uh, so Brad, let me tell you, let me ask you this though. So I know for a fact, and while a lot of people don't want to talk to pay, but Jennifer and I would tell you every time we're at a career fair recruiting event, one of the first things we hear from people is, what are you going to pay me? And I get it. It's very important for us to know that. So, uh, Brad, I know we offered you less, and you're in sunny California, and you're going to come to sunny Lincoln, Nebraska. Could you tell me, uh, you know, why would you accept the job? Um, so I just needed a change and to get out of California. Um, I knew about Duncan's reputation. Um, and it made, it made that transition easy for me. Um, my wife and I talked it over and we needed a change, not just for, um, ourselves, but our kids and, um, what it came down to is quality of life. It was a quality of life that we could get here in Lincoln that we couldn't get in California. Yeah. The cost of living really fed into that. Yeah. Sitting in traffic every day. On the five free day. It was part of that process. <laughs> Going through the five stages of grief on a daily basis. <laughs> yeah, you and I have had that conversation. I wish I'd have recorded it the first time. It was pretty funny about, you know, you want to be an alcoholic, but you can't get home to drink. So anyway, <laughs> I'm getting off topic. So let's keep moving here. Um, and I, again, looking at your career path, I mean, you're like a rock star here. You, you know, you started as a tech one and now, you know, four or five years later, you're the assistant engine manager. So would you say we recognize hard work, talent? What do you think? Yeah, Doug does a great job um, identifying individuals that are driven, um, you know, recognizing and then investing in those employees, um, giving them every opportunity to succeed. And yeah, every opportunity to be successful. And I will tell you here at our company, there are there are many of us who get into a position, that's where we stay. You may get guys who become a tech two and they just want to be a tech two and we welcome that. I mean, you know, they still work hard, they make good money. And then as, as Brian talked, or Brad talked about, excuse me, well, um, they look the same. Really. <laughs> <laughs> but and, <laughs> as you look at it and think about it, one of the ways you can help with that pay is we do offer overtime, right? Yep. And, you know, until this year, we were like gangbusters with overtime, correct? Correct. Yeah, there are many times, many years where we had potentially 15% of our annual income was overtime. 
Yeah, so more. good chance to, to, to make some good money. So let me ask you, what would you uh, look for in a, when you're hiring an engine tech? We're really looking for some, for individuals, technicians that are just excited and ready to learn, excited in aviation, excited in the process. Um, you know, a lot of times technicians come in, we're, we're throwing a ton of information at them. They're getting forced fed with fire hose. So um, it's really, uh, taking that information in and kind of dissecting it down and make it work for them. And um, I know Brian didn't have an AMP, but that was six years ago. So now, do we still hire people that don't have AMPs? Yes, we are. We are. I would say fifty percent of uh, the technicians that we hire um, in the engine line department, um, you know, don't have an AMP. You know, sometimes they have experience. Sometimes they have little to none. You know, it might be automotive. Um, it might be. You know, farm equipment, it might be um, sometimes even just limited to no experience at all. They just have to drive. And I will, uh, Brad and I have worked together, and I will tell you, we, we had a young lady who had really great drive, had really good mechanical experience, but unfortunately, Brad's department was full, and he couldn't really take on somebody else like that, but we managed to move her over into another department where we hired her, where she's doing really well in our accessory shop. So I would encourage you out there to uh, think about applying, even if you don't think your skills cross over, you know, maybe apply and give us a chance to talk to you and tell you if we could um, help you out with that. So how about, Brad, how about some advice for veterans? I think the biggest advice that I can give is just roll your training and the structure that you've received in the military into something meaning and fulfilling to you. Um, you know, if you think Duncan Aviation is that path, I recommend at least checking out our facilities and seeing what we're all about. All right, well, Brad, so thanks for answering all my correct questions and we've talked about career development and now why don't you give us a little background on our apprenticeship program that we started, which we think it's pretty cool here. Yeah, it's a, it's a great program, great opportunity um, for people to obtain their federal license, whether that be an airframe or power plant. Um, it's a two-year program, 24-month program of on-the-job experience. So you're working day-to-day, um, -day, but then you're also doing supplemental coursework um, in our training center where you're able to get um, lab and lecture time um, covering various topics that you would need to support an airframe or power plant license. Yeah. Well, thanks. That is a good program. And uh, I'm going to talk uh, in just a moment here about our Skillbridge program that we're a part of. Before I do, I'm going to talk about some similarities that uh, Aviation, Military, and, and Duncan have together. And um, just so our audience all know. So a lot of us, I know, uh, probably Brian, Brad, and myself were what we call O-level. So we were technicians that worked directly on the airplane. And then you have eye level, which are technicians that work in back shops, take components apart, do structural repair. And then you have depot level, where you take the airplane completely apart. Well, here at Duncan Aviation, we do all that. So we have all those levels of maintenance. Uh, both uh, military aviation and Duncan are set up about the same. We have airframe, engine, avionics, QA, line department, back shops. Um, we are then we take them and we split them into different departments. For example, our airframe department has about 13 different teams and they're actually, their teams are set up model specific of aircraft. And then you engine guys, you're a little different, are you not? We are. How are you set up? Uh, we have uh, two different teams, you know, uh, so my team, we have, uh, we work on Pratt Whitney, Rolls Royce and Williams engines. And the other team works on uh, Honeywell and GE products. So Brian, I get tired of looking at you and I really want to do some, you know, because you're a nice guy, but you were in the Marine Corps. So can I work on the other team? <laughs> Uh, sure, yeah. Well, usually it's uh, when manpower is available or isn't available for the other team. So if they have a project that either it might be a drop-in or uh, something that's a little bit more hotter than some of the other projects that are scheduled, we'll take over that scheduled project and uh, work a different platform. Might it be 731s or a GE product. And then, Brad, how about if you talk to us about, we have an MPI shop, Major Periodic Inspection, and we have that over there. And we got a pretty cool authorization a couple of years ago. Could you tell us what that was? Yeah, we uh, got our CZI capabilities, um, so doing complete engine overhauls on 731 engines. Um, so that that's a, a huge uh, part of our business is our overhaul shop. We also have a test cell over there where we run the engines um, after overhaul through the test cell uh, prior to going on wing. So you mean to say Brian's guys can take the engine, the TFE 731 off, bring it over to, your, over to our MPI shop and they take it completely apart? 
they tear it completely down at that eye level, inspect, wash parts, uh, ADT them, and put them back together. All right. And then we run it in test cell? We run it in We test actually cell. certify it? Correct. And then we hang it back on the wing? We do that. Oh, that's pretty cool. There are not a lot of companies that have that capability, but we do. And we also, just for our audience, we, we also made our uh, test cell big enough to where we can, I'm pretty sure we're looking at like the THF, HTF, excuse me, 7,000. Are we not? Hopefully. Correct. Yep. Possibly in the future. Um, it does accommodate, uh, I think, a thrust rating up to 10,000 thrust pounds. So um, there's an opportunity for a larger aircraft. Okay. So we're doing well. Awesome. All right. I'm going to pop in here for a minute. I've got a couple of questions. I just want to make sure to get answered if people need to, to jump off. So I've had some questions about where um, the recording of the webinar will live after today. And so that will be on the Duncan Aviation career page, uh, which is Duncan Aviation dot arrow a e r o and then backslash careers and so you'll be able to find the link there so if you want to view it later or share it uh, with your friends you sure can do that a um, couple other quick questions i've had um, what locations are we hiring so we have kind of a, a smattering of them right now um, we do have uh, airframe position open in all three of our main locations um, lincoln battle creek and provo and we have a couple of our satellite locations that are hiring too. So again, uh, jump out to our website um, to see all of our career um, openings currently and then those locations. Um, and then Kendall, I know you're getting into the skill bridge and there's a lots of um, lots of interest in the skill bridge and wanting to know more. So have at it. One thing I forgot to mention, mention on our apprenticeship program, since we are talking about veterans, is you can use your veterans benefits uh, for that apprenticeship program for cost of living. Thanks. Very good. All right, so the SkillBridge program really is a program DOD made uh, about six years ago or so. And so what it is is all of our service members who are getting ready to, dis to leave the service, their last 180 days they can ask for permissive duty to be able to leave um, their squadron, whichever it might be, and then they can apply. They have to apply. They have to be approved by their command. Then when they send us paperwork to us, then we do our part, send it back to them. Once it's all approved, then they come to work for us for anywhere up to 180 days uh, where they work as a Duncan Aviation employee. Uh, they're just paid by their service, whichever that would be. So they're getting all their military compensation. They're getting all their benefits. Uh, we don't pay them, so they get to, but they get all the training and all the um experience that they need to go from the military to uh, a civilian world. Uh, we have had uh, three people apply and you other guys I want to pick on our other services because all three have come from the Air Force. So come on Navy and Marines, let's get busy here in the Army and even you Coasties. We'd like to have a few more people <laughs> apply, but up there you see Richard Brown, Avionics, worked in Battle Creek, Michigan. Uh, Eric, I can't really say Eric's last name, so I just call him Eric C. And Eric has worked, he's currently working in our line department here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And we had a gentleman who just recently joined us about two weeks ago in Teterboro in our satellite, avionics satellite. He's a uh, avionics technician. So that's pretty cool. And how the program works, you go through it, you do your whole thing, uh, your internship. But about a month prior, most of the guys go on terminal leave, which you want to do. Uh, and then if we have an opening, you can apply. If you apply, you interview. And if we, you're the best candidate, we select you, you can go to work for it. Now, that's not a guarantee because we might not have an opening, but you have the opportunity. You also have the opportunity to say, thank you, Duncan Aviation, for letting me get here, live here. Let me see what it's like, but I found a better company I think I'd like to go to work for. And so that's fair game. It is a great program. Uh, we are more than happy to have you uh, please contact me, Jennifer, either one of these two guys, and we'll see what we can do to help you to get into that program. Great program. Excellent. All righty. Great. Thank you, guys. Okay, so we've got some questions. I'm going to hit those here in a minute, but just to kind of wrap up um, our info session today, a little bit more about um, why Duncan Aviation, the benefits and perks of being a Duncan Aviation team member as you are considering uh, maybe an employment change or uh, joining the team brand new. Um, so as a Duncan Aviation team member, you are eligible to participate in our comprehensive medical insurance plan, which is effective on your first day of employment. We also offer an on-site family health center for our team members, so i.e. Um, a physician's assistant here on site, uh, which is super handy and nice to have. Um, team members and their, dependent, and their dependents can visit her 
um, along with a Duncan Aviation contributed health savings account. Um, outside of a medical insurance, Duncan also offers a 401k retirement plan. Uh, we provide relocation assistance to those who qualify. Uh, everyone has a personal time bank to use for vacation and sick leave, um, and we have a tool account as well. Um, so keeping with our theme today of team member development and career progression, we also provide a tuition reimbursement program. We offer lots of in-house development and training pro programs and provide for team members to attend OEM schools to enhance their skills and knowledge uh, pertaining to specific aircraft models, which we have a couple of those examples uh, here with us today. Um, so as you can tell, we've got lots of stuff going on um, here at Duncan, not only on the business side, but with just um, everything we have with recruiting um, and uh, programs that we are involved with. So you can keep up with us um, on all the major social media platforms. Um, the video fail earlier, you can definitely see that on our YouTube channel, so please go subscribe to that. Um, and if you're so inclined, you can follow us on Snapchat just to get a little bit more raw behind the scenes footage um, of what we have cracking at our Duncan location. So our snap code is on the screen there for you if you would like to um, follow us that way. Um, and I mentioned it earlier, but here it is on screen, our website, there we go. Um, so that is our career page. So please um, jump out and visit us. You will see all sorts of info about uh, life as a Duncan Aviation team member, our career opportunities, um, and some videos, and then this webinar will live there as well. Um, you can see um, any career uh, current openings. You can also email our recruiting team directly um, if you'd like to share a resume with us directly or if you have some specific questions. Um, so you can reach us at recruiting at duncanaviation.com. Um, on our website, if you don't quite see a position that you're interested in um, or not quite sure if you're ready to make a move, you can also uh, join our talent network. So you'll see that call out box kind of on the right hand side of the screen. And um, you can enter in your information, share your resume that way, and that will get you into our, um, our, our contact pool so we can notify you as positions come open in maybe locations or areas that you are interested in. So with that, let me see, we've got quite a few questions here to go through. So I'll start off um, first, um, maybe with Brian and Brad. Um, so I have applied for a position. What is the selection process once I submit an application? Well, your application, your resume are reviewed, and then you would get a callback. Um, typically callbacks happen within, you know, one to two weeks. It really depends on our schedule and depends on that shop schedule that you've applied to. Um, if it's, if it's a busy time, um, you know, you might not hear for, you know, a few days, it could be a couple days, it could be a couple weeks, it just depends. Typically, we try to get back to you right away. Excellent. Are interviews in person? Uh, we do a variety of interviews. Typically, we start off with a phone interview, and then we would proceed to either an in-person or video interview. Perfect. Okay. What, um, let's see, what's this question? What does the schedule look like, hours and days? Apprenticeship program. Yes. As far as the apprenticeship program goes, um, typically we accommodate all shifts. Um, we have multiple different shifts. We are 24 7 operation. So um, we have uh, technicians here at our facility, um, at our main facilities, pretty much throughout the day. So, um, but we accommodate for those individuals in the apprenticeship program. Typically, those individuals would be on a kind of a first shift, a day shift schedule Monday through Friday. Um, where they would be completing their OJE during their workday and then picking up their supplemental training in a classroom setting. And are we looking to start that in sometime soon, August, September? Um, it depends um, on the schedule with our apprenticeship program. I think the airframe apprenticeship program, I want to say it's it starts in August and finishes a similar time frame. Um, our power plant apprenticeship program is in the process of being accredited or accredited. So in, in August, we will start that power plant program. And nice. as far as uh, um, positions available within the apprenticeship program or with any of our departments, it just var it varies depending on need. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, here's a question from Andrew. How likely is it to train and work at a full service location and then transfer to a satellite location? It's, uh, it's highly likely, you know, we've had multiple guys from the engine shop come in 
get their AMPs, get some time underneath their belt, and then uh, transfer over to a rapid response team in many of our locations, you know, Long Beach, Chicago, Florida, New York. Um, I mean, they're, they're all over the place. Yeah, it depends on whether you're, you know, engine rapid response or whether you're in a satellite location. In some of the satellite locations, um, you can actually train and work in that satellite, satellite location, depending on the need for individual. And, and I would tell you, our engine guys are probably out there in the, at the rapid response, are probably looking for someone that has three to five years of experience, and they also have uh, OEM, or they've been trained on specific 731 engines, or maybe a HDF 7000, because you are uh, basically living out of a suitcase, and you're on the call, and you're on the road quite a bit, so it's a really cool job, but at the same time, there's a a lot of traveling and it requires a lot of experience because it could be you and another technician taking care of a customer's engine or you alone or you alone or you thank alone. you mm -hmm. yeah so christopher asks um do the satellite locations do on the job training so and it's similar to that some of them do have that capability it just depends upon the size yeah the avionic satellites yeah. will potentially do yes on -job training. oh yeah but the engine the engine uh rt groups um, that are potentially attached to those satellites mm -hmm. will not. Not so much. Very good. So that, again, is where um, we do have a number of team members that will start kind of in one of our full-service locations to get some time under their belt and then uh, move on. So here's a good question. Um, how long does it take to get a response after applying? Brad, Brian, do you have a estimated timeline? It just it, it really depends on the workload of the shop that you're applying to. Um, we're, like I said, we're moving. Um, our focus is on the customer and getting there. By myself or the team leaders, mm -hmm. you know. So it just depends on the department. Yeah. Uh, kind of as a. Um Suggestion for anyone who is applying, if you have applied, you re, uh, your application been, has been submitted, if you haven't heard anything um, within like a week or so, you can always reach out. Um, if you email back through your application submission, uh, that will come to me and so we all we can follow up from there. Um, so Stella wants to know a little bit about our summer internship um, opportunities for college students. Do you want to talk about this? Yeah, we currently uh, have interns in-house now um, for the summer months. Um, from a variety of uh, schools and programs from around the country. Um, it's a great opportunity. Aviation um, is a interaction that you have potentially with anybody in the aviation in industry is a potential job interview. So you really, you really want to put your best foot forward. And they, they're paid internships, right? They are paid yeah. internships. We also do offer a little bit of a um, housing assistance, um, monetary housing assistance for those that are coming in um, if you're traveling from far away. So um, Dale has a question about um, what would be options to transfer into working for Duncan for students who are in programs such as Job Corps. Um, and so we actually do partner with um, some Job Corps programs specifically for um, our Utah location. Um, currently, we have a partnership with the Job Corps there in the state and we've hired a number of them into our paint department. Um, so lots of those students who have been involved with like auto collision or in those auto collision programs um, have been a great uh, fit for us and our team there. So um, certainly any of those students um, would definitely be available um, and considered for our positions. Um, here's a good question. If you started in one department and wanted to move to another, how hard would that be? So we, we've actually picked up in the engine shop at least uh, people from facilities, from parts department, uh, it all takes is one application, you know, transferring departments. So obviously, you know, getting your foot in the door is is pretty good. You can get out there, everybody knows who you might be. Um, so transferring department is is just an interview away. Uh, just like two applicants to stay in their department for a year prior to transfer. And we also allow our Could be in Lincoln, as we now know, there's Provo, Utah, and there's an opening. You could apply, and you've got to be accepted because we're we just don't go. Well, Brad, you're a nice guy, Brian's not, so we take Brad. There's a process that takes place there. Yeah, you might not necessarily see your dream job posted on the job.
Okay. So I've had a couple of questions on here to um, give us a more specific description or definition of our rapid response teams. So our rapid response teams are for engine AOG. Airframe rapid response teams that are tied to our full service locations. Our engine rapid response teams, however, are spread out evenly distributed across the United States, covering uh, pretty much every major. So, what those rapid response teams consist of is maybe a shop of one individual, and they're working out. Hanger, maybe on a field, maybe out in a blowing snowstorm, maybe uh, halfway around the world to work on a downed AOG aircraft. Um, so it's it's a it's a variety <laughs> variety of work performed. And I'd like to add that again. Remember, you're going to have a company credit card, you're going to have a cell phone, you're going to have a laptop, and so you are the man. Or woman, whichever it is, because you're going to order parts, you're going to ship parts, uh, you're receive going to do parts. maintenance, receive parts. Um, that's why we say that the majority of our patients who are out there in our rapid response have started normally in one of our locations where they have an experience where they can go out. Now, that's not always the case. We have a work order system that we utilize, and it takes some time. Uh, but be prepared to live out of a suitcase. Here's kind of a, a timely question that came in. Uh, how's the work-life balance at Duncan? Well, for me as a team leader, uh, you know, when I first started off, uh, my work-life balance was mainly work. You know, I, I cho chose to, to be here as much as I could, you know, taking any overtime experience that I could. Um, but, you know, as a team leader, speaking as a team leader, you know, I do respect everybody's life to work you have life commitments that you need to take care of so but you know work life if you really want to be here all, all the time and the work is is there you know you're more than welcome to be here you know, as much as you want uh, that allows and uh, you know and work the one thing I will add is that we're a family owned and family oriented company so if uh, there's something that you need to do to take care of your family, you know, we're going to make sure that happens. And we have talked about overtime, but I'm here to tell you, we're flexible enough here that some of our team leaders and teams will say, okay, Brian, how about, can you, you know, I need, I need four hours of overtime this week from you. And Brian decides he would just rather come in on Saturday and work from six to 10, just so we get that done. Because remember, this is one of the things, it's kind of like launching an airplane off a carrier that you've got to go now. Well, when we got to deliver for a customer, we don't tell the customer that. We tell them, they say when, and we say it's going to happen. And so you have to figure that out. And you have to kind of work with us to figure that work balance. But if you let it be known, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll find it quite different here. One of the things you will find when you walk in, you never punch a time card here. We don't have time cards. We sell our time to a work order. So... We want you to be an adult, show up on time, do your job, go home. Okay. Um, here's another one. I'm currently serving and will be available for work um, in mid-2021. When should I apply? Um, you know, obviously, as, if you see a job opening that you like, apply for it. You know, uh, um, certain times allow that uh, we can we can move it to the left or the right as far as uh, timing of uh, employment. but. Uh, so you typically start looking, you know, six months prior to your separation date, start looking, maybe start applying, you know, three to four months out from that SEP, SEP date. Because um, it is dependent on that department, they might need someone right now. You know, hey, we interview you and we say, hey, let's, uh, let's wait until they're separated and then we'll pick them up. And I would encourage you to uh, to apply and then you can reach out to Jennifer and I because one of the things we try to do is we see good candidates we try to put them in our pool so we can come back and say hey we now do have a position are you still interested same way if you use our 
a tool up there on our website, you could actually get a job alert later on. So, uh, and for me personally, looking at it for two years, I would tell you 90 days start applying. Very good. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. So AK wants to know, does Duncan work on any supplemental type certificates for a large body commercial aircraft? Uh, not for large body commercial. We typically stick with corporate aviation, but yes, we do perform. And one last question here. So um, someone says, I've applied in the past, but I wasn't selected. Should I even try to apply again? Yeah, if, you, if you don't get selected for the job that you want, you know, apply again for, like uh, Brad was saying, you know, if it, if, it might be not be the, the job of choice, but uh, it might be to be able to get your foot before. But no, of course. If you were to look at our website, and you can look at several for example, I'll talk about our satellites, and recently we did a little special on our satellites. They've been around, I think, 35 years now. Satellite manager started here at Duncan Aviation as a parts runner. Yes, he has been here for 30 years. He got into the company and started moving around, and that's the great thing about us. We're looking for people that have the attitude, potential, fit our culture and give them opportunity to move into different departments to do what they want to do. Excellent. Okay. Um, so if you didn't get your question answered or if you think of questions later that you want to submit, uh, remember that our recruiting at Duncan Aviation email address is here. That'll get you to Kendall and myself and we can uh, answer questions for you or get you to the right person. Um, so otherwise, thank you very much for taking time to join us today. Um, go ahead and visit our webinar recording um, on our website, duncanaviation.aero backslash careers.